The Kraft Foods Company presents Willard Waterman as the Great Gildersleeve. <laughs> the Great Gildersleeve is brought to you, partially transcribed, by the Kraft Foods Company. It looks wonderful, it tastes wonderful. But the big news about Kraft's new parquet margarine is the way it spreads. Even when ice cold, new parquet spreads smoothly. It won't tear a fresh slice of bread, it won't crumple thin crackers. New parquet is ready to spread smoothly the instant it leaves your refrigerator. Get Kraft's new parquet tomorrow in the new blue package. You'll love the way it tastes, you'll love the way it spreads. <laughs> Well, ever since school started, the great Gildersleeve's nephew, Leroy, has been having a little trouble with his studies. Of course, he wouldn't be human if he didn't blame part of it on his new teacher. What does she think I am, Bertie? A quiz kid or something? That Miss Tuttle knows what she's doing, Leroy. Yeah? Look, I gotta read this whole chapter of history tonight. What's she trying to do, make a bookworm out of me? She can't make no bookworm out of you. You'd wiggle out of it. <laughs> <laughs> well, I guess I gotta get started. Bertie, what do you know about the Lewis and Clark expedition? Leroy, that's a trip I didn't take. <laughs> For corn's sake. What do you know about the War of 1812? Well, Bertie knows it was fought in 1812. <laughs> <laughs> didn't get much out of Bertie. Guess I'll have to read this stuff. Gosh, look at all the pages. Not even any pictures, except some old maps. Well, oh, here goes nothing. When Thomas Jefferson learned that Napoleon Bonaparte would sell the area called Louisiana... Hello, he... Leroy. Hi, Unc. What are you reading? The comics? You kidding? Oh, history. Yeah. History was always my favorite subject. Good, you can help me if you know history. Did I say history? I meant English. <laughs> you can help me with that after dinner. After dinner? Well, let's see now. There was something I had to do after dinner. <laughs> okay, don't help me. Let a little kid fight it out with that new teacher all by himself. <laughs> What's this, my boy? I'm having a horrible time. I think my teacher picks on me, Unc. No, Leroy, I can't believe it's all your teacher's fault. Surely you don't think it's mine. Well, if you and your teacher are having a little misunderstanding, why don't you stay after school and talk things out? Stay after school when I don't even have to? Yes, and it wouldn't hurt you to do something nice for your teacher. Like what, quit school? <laughs> <laughs> of course not. But you might offer to wash the blackboard, empty the waste paper basket, pound the chalk out of the erasers. Murder. What's wrong with that? What's wrong with it? The kids wouldn't even speak to me. I'm not going to polish the apple. I'm not asking you to polish the apple. Just wash the blackboard and clean the erasers. <laughs> Nuh-uh. Took me years to get my good reputation with a gang, and I'm not going to spoil it. Leroy, I'm not going to let you flunk history. If I have to go talk to your teacher myself. That's all I need. What? An uncle who's an apple polisher. <laughs> Leroy... Marjorie, good morning. Morning, Bertie. Am I too late for coffee? No, ma'am. Mr. Gillsleeve's having his second cup in the dining room. Miss Gillsleeve! Yes, Bertie? Miss Marjorie's here for coffee! Come in, my dear. Hello, Unky. Yeah. My, but you're all dressed up this morning. Big meeting at the city hall. No, I'm going to pay a visit to the school today. Oh? Leroy's having a little trouble with Miss Tuttle. Miss Tuttle? New teacher. And I always say it doesn't hurt to get on the good side of your teacher. If Leroy won't make the gesture, I will. Now, Unky, let's not go upsetting the whole public school system. What? More hot coffee, anybody? Oh, no thanks, Bertie. Uh, does Leroy want somebody to go to his history teacher? No, ma'am. Bertie, I think Marjorie asked me. Oh, I thought she's asking me. 
Sorry. <laughs> That's all right, Bertie. <laughs> you gave the right answer. Yes, yes. Well, when anybody asks me, I give them a straight, honest answer, and I thought you was asking me. Yeah, all right. Bert. And the straight, honest answer is Leroy don't want nobody going to his teacher about nothing. Of course, nobody asked me. Yeah, but Bertie. if they did ask me, that's what I'd give them. Bertie. The straight, honest answer that Leroy don't want nobody going to his teacher about nothing. Of course, nobody asked me. <laughs> I'm sorry I brought it up. Hey, ma'am. As Mr. Cooley at the back door. He'll come in. He always does. Hey, ma'am. Doors mean nothing to that man. Really, Unky, I don't think you should go to Leroy's teacher if he doesn't want you to. All right, all right. Eggman. <laughs> right into the dining room. Excuse me, I'm leaving the eggs in the refrigerator. Hello, Bertie. Thank you, Mr. Cooley. I'll find them. I don't like to leave eggs without telling somebody I've left them. Hello, Mrs. Thompson. Hello, Mr. Cooley. Last week, I went to a customer's and had to go clear to the attic before I found someone. I'll bet they were hiding. <laughs> but I found them. Hello, Mr. Gildersleeve. Hello. Haven't you gone to the office yet? Well, I'm in no hurry this morning. I had intended going by the school to see Leroy's teacher. Miss Tuttle, you sure can pick them. <laughs> <laughs> Why, Mr. Cooley. I didn't mean to be disrespectful, but take it from your egg man. Miss Tuttle is some chick. <laughs> Well, I got the Im I got the impression from Leroy that Miss Tuttle was an well, not too attractive. Leroy's just a boy. In fact, if he thinks that, he's still a babe in the woods. <laughs> oh? She wears rouge and lipstick. To class? Anki, they all do. Please, Marjorie, I'm listening to Mr. Cooley. She also wears high heels. Very modern. <laughs> I don't see why Leroy can't get along with a teacher like Miss Tuttle. Now, Unky... Marjorie, I consider it my obligation as his uncle to go talk to her about his grades. If you'll wait until I deliver my eggs, I'll go with you. <laughs> Cooley, this is my problem. Well, here's the room. Yeah, that must be Miss Tuttle at the desk. <laughs> She's even prettier than Cooley described her. Yeah, but I'm here to help Leroy. Uh, pardon me. Uh, yes? You're Miss Tuttle, I presume. Yes, won't you come in? Yeah, thank you. I hope I'm not intruding. No, I was just grading some papers. Well, I dropped by to talk to you about one of your pupils. I'm Throckmorton P. Gildersleeve. Uh, Gildersleeve? I don't recall a student by that name. Well, his name is Leroy Forrester. I'm his uncle. Oh, yes, Leroy. <laughs> Dear Leroy. <laughs> <laughs> by the way, which is his desk? The desk in the next row with his name on it. Oh? Do they put their names on the desks now? This is carved. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, Leroy always was good at woodwork. <laughs> Better than history, I guess. Uh, Miss Tuttle, I wouldn't suggest this if it wasn't lunchtime, but would you care to skip out for a bite so you and I can talk over Leroy's history problems? Well, thank you, Mr. Gildersleeve. I brought my lunch. Well, is it anything that'll keep until tomorrow? <laughs> <laughs> or uh, perhaps you'd like to come to the house for dinner this evening. Well, I'm sorry, Mr. Gildersleeve, I can't this evening. Yeah. Well, when you get around to grading Leroy's history paper, I guess you'll remember you were asked. <laughs> you can't be serious, Mr. Gildersleeve. Well, serious with Leroy. He's been getting some low grades, Miss Tuttle. Well, I know, but I try to be fair. Now, if you don't mind, I have important things to do. Well, I have important things to do, too. Perhaps you don't realize I'm the city water commissioner. Oh, just thought I'd mention it. <laughs> Not that it should necessarily influence you in grading Leroy's papers. <laughs> if you want to criticize the school grading system, why don't you come to the parent-teachers meeting tomorrow evening? I'm not criticizing the school grading system, Miss Tuttle. My complaint is about you. Well, that's one reason we have parent-teacher meetings, so you can air your grievances. May we expect you? Me? 
Well... I'm sure everybody will be anxious to hear your views. <laughs> I'm afraid I can't make it tomorrow night. Where's my hat? <laughs> What a busy day. 3.30 and I haven't eaten. Well, I shouldn't have wasted my lunch hour talking to Leroy's teacher. Eh, maybe Peavy has some lunch sandwiches left. Hello, Peavy. Yeah, hello, Mr. Gildersleeve. <laughs> what can I do for you this afternoon? Peavy, what's on the menu? Yeah, let's take a look. Roast beef sandwich, Swiss cheese on rye, tuna salad. Yeah, I'll take the cheese sandwich. I <laughs> know you won't. <laughs> what? We're fresh out of cheese. Well, give me the roast beef sandwich. You mm, don't have that either. <laughs> well, tuna salad. Yeah, it's too late for tuna, too. Stevie, <laughs> if you don't have any of these things, why did you mention them? You didn't ask me if I had them. You asked what was on the menu. <laughs> oh, my goodness. I haven't had a bite of lunch yet. Well, it won't hurt you to skip a meal, Mr. Gildersleeve. Well, I wouldn't have if I hadn't spent so much time with Miss Tuttle. Oh, been dating one of the school teachers, have you? <laughs> Peavy, would I be dating a school teacher during school hours? <laughs> well, there's always recess, you know. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes. Peavy, I went to talk to her about Leroy's low marks in history, and she practically accused me of trying to upset the whole school grading system. And you weren't trying, I take it. Well, of course not. I was just interested in Leroy's grade. Yeah, I mean, well, so I made a mistake. But, Peavy, do you know what that teacher wanted to do? Chase you off the school ground? <laughs> she tried to talk me into going to the parent-teacher's meeting tomorrow night and making a fool of myself. My, my. She's not going to get me to any meeting. Hi, Unc. Well, it's Leroy. Hi, Mr. Peavy. Oh, hello, Leroy. Hey, Unc, I've been looking for you. Guess what happened at school? Uh-oh. No, it's good news. Oh. I want you to go to the parent-teacher's meeting with me tomorrow night. Uh, Leroy, I was just telling Peavy I don't think I'd better go. I don't think you'd better go either. <laughs> yeah? Gosh, it's going to be a big deal. It's American Education Week. It is? And after the meeting, the school's going to have open house. Ooh, that'd be nice. That's when all the parents get a chance to see what the kids have been doing. We're going to exhibit our work. Not your history papers, I hope. No. Heck, I'm an artist. You don't change. Yeah. They're putting one of my pictures on the wall. They are, Leroy? I'm getting to be a regular Rembrandt. Yeah, my boy, I've seen some of your drawings. But I... this is my masterpiece, they tell me. Mm, I'd like to see that. <laughs> so would I. But... Aunt gets a picture of your reservoir. It is? With you standing on the dam. You mean I'm in it? Sure, I did the picture for you. Little Leroy. Here, I'll take my pencil and sketch it on the back of this menu. Okay, Mr. Peavy? Okay by me. We're out of everything anyway. <laughs> <laughs> this will just give you an idea, Unc. Well, here's the reservoir. And you. And the dam. Leroy, isn't the reservoir a little large? Now, that isn't the reservoir. That's you. <laughs> <laughs> Peavy. The Great Gildersleeve will be back in just a moment. Today, a great new discovery by Kraft Foods is changing a family custom that's been going on for years. The discovery is Kraft's new parquet margarine. And if you serve new parquet at your house, you won't have to leave it standing in a warm place overnight so it'll spread easily on your breakfast toast or rolls. New parquet spreads smoothly even when it's cold, even when it's ice cold. That means you can whisk it from your refrigerator to the table just a minute before any meal is ready. Parquet slices instantly into neat pats, no crumbling or splintering. It spreads without an argument, won't tear the freshest bread or crumple thin crackers. There's another wonderful thing about new parquet. You can leave it standing out in a warm kitchen and it won't melt down. It holds its shape instead of running all over the plate. There's never been a table spread like it before. 
Kraft's new method of making margarine improves the texture of parquet at any temperature, hot or cold, and makes it even more appetizing and richer in wholesome flavor than ever. Get Kraft's delicious new parquet tomorrow. Look for the new ice blue package in your grocer's dairy case. The picture of a cake of ice in the corner of the package will remind you that parquet is the new margarine that spreads smoothly even when ice cold. Well, nobody can deny that the great Gildersleeve always means well, but when he went to the teacher about Leroy's grades, he got himself in a jam. You say your uncle's definitely not going to the meeting? No, but that's okay if he's busy or something. Doesn't mean a thing to me, not a thing. Well, if we've got a budding Rembrandt, somebody should be there to see his painting. Oh, that... I may even burn the painting. Well, before you do that, I certainly would like to see it. You would? I'd give a pretty penny to be at that parent-teacher's meeting tonight. Of course, I don't know who I'd go with. Hey, I got an idea. You have? Would you like to go with me? I'm going to be by myself, you know. Well, Leroy, I'd be honored. Oh, boy, you're swell, Mr. Peavy. <laughs> no, I'm not. I'm just a patron of the arts. Hey, why don't we have a soda on the house and plan our evening? Keen. Chocolate, pal. That's for me, too, pal. Two chocolates coming up. Hey, here's Judge Hooker. Hi, Judge. Hello, Leroy. <laughs> Greetings, Peavy. Oh, Judge. <laughs> Having sodas, are you? Yeah, on the house. Yeah, we're celebrating, Judge. Well, if they're on the house, make it three. Let's all us kids celebrate. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, Mr. Peavy? Well, the judge is a pretty old kid, but now, Peavy, what's the occasion, Leroy? Mr. Peavy's taking me to the parent-teacher's meeting tonight. It's open house. It is? Where's your uncle? He's busy or something. Leroy and I are going to have quite a time. Here's your free soda, Judge. Leroy. Thanks, Mr. Peavy. Best-looking soda I ever saw. <laughs> uh, Peavy, I hardly think that you're the one to accompany Leroy tonight. How's that? If I may say so, I'm much closer to the family than you. After all, I'm the boy's godfather. Yeah, I'm his pharmacist. <laughs> if Gildy can't accompany Leroy tonight, I should. It was I who helped nurse the lad through his little childhood ailments, didn't I, Leroy? Uh, yeah, but... Well, I brought him his pills, didn't I, Leroy? <laughs> yeah, but... And I recall sitting by his bedside when he had the mumps. Mm, you should have caught him. What'd you say, Peavy? I said, so what? I think, I think that I should be the one to take him. And I say I should take him. Hey, I'm pretty popular. Well, there you are, Leroy. Hi, Unc. Hello, Peavy. Judge. Hello. Hello. Peavy, no matter what you say, I'm going to do it. Well, no matter what you say, I'm going to do it, old Budinsky. I'm going. Ah, oh, Pooh, I'm going. Wait a minute. Wait a minute, fellows. I don't know where you're going, but why don't both of you go? Hey, that's an idea. Well, how about it, Peavy? Mm, suits me. Swell. Yeah, you see? Takes me to iron things out. Where are you two going? Unc, since you can't go, they're taking me to the open house at school tonight. Yes, now everybody's happy. Tea, everybody but me. Bertie? No, sir, Mr. Gilsleeve. He's gone. Already? Well, too bad. I wanted to have a word with the boy. Yes, sir. The judge and Mr. Peavy picked him up and took him out to dinner. Oh, Ain't well. that nice of the judge and Mr. Peavy? Well, I wanted to tell Leroy I'd about decided to take him myself. Yes, sir. Mr. Gilsleeve, why didn't you take him? Well, frankly, Bertie, I had a little tiff with his teacher. I didn't think I should go to the meeting. Yes, sir. Well, when somebody muddles things up, it sure is nice when somebody else comes along and clears them. Yeah, you're right, Bertie. And the judge and Mr. Peavy sure cleared things up for Leroy. You're all right, Bertie. I know I muddled them. Yes, sir. Oop. <laughs> Sometimes I wish Bertie wouldn't always agree with me. <laughs> George, the snow's getting deeper all the time. 
I always enjoy the first snowfall. But not tonight. What am I doing, walking around the schoolhouse? I can't go in. I would like to sneak a look at Leroy's painting, though. Picture of me, painted by the boy's own hand. Hey, room's right above me. I could crawl up this fire escape before the crowd gets here. You, why don't I? <laughs> Slippery. Oh, well. What if I break my neck? Nobody cares. Hey, I'm in luck. Window's unlocked. I hope nobody sees me. I can see the headlines. Water commissioner caught breaking into schoolhouse. <laughs> well, I could just tell him I was going back to the eighth grade where I belong. It, 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 ah. yeah, it's nice and warm in here. Now, yeah, let's see. There's a lot of paintings and charts on the wall. Wonder which is Leroy's. Hey, somebody coming. Where will I hide? Here's the door. Go for supply closet. Well, I'll have to squeeze in. What is all this stuff? Pencils, chalk, blackboard erasers. You have a very nice school here, Leroy. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, not bad for a school. Uh, there they are. And here I am. What a spot. Where's your painting, Leroy? Oh, we'll get to that, Mr. Peavy. But here goes my teacher. I want you to meet her. Miss Tuttle. Hope she doesn't need any supplies. Oh, hello, Leroy. Hi. <laughs> Miss Tuttle, I want you to meet some good friends of mine. Judge Hooker and Mr. Peavy. How do you do, gentlemen? Welcome to the school. It's our pleasure, Miss Tuttle. Yes, it is. <laughs> oh, where's your uncle, Leroy? I don't know. <laughs> well, I'm sorry he isn't here. I was looking forward to seeing him at the meeting tonight. Yeah, I'll bet she was. <laughs> Leroy, why don't you show your guest to see? Sure. Come on, Mr. Peavy, Judge. Let's sit over here. Okay. But what about your painting? Oh, we have to wait until the meeting's over for that. Here, I'll sit between you. <laughs> yeah, they're sitting right outside the door. I wish I could shift my position a little. Yeah, at least I can turn my head. It, oop! Stuck my nose in a chalky eraser. <laughs> Looks like a big turnout tonight. Oh, yeah. Darn dust. I, Everybody I, interested in the school will be I, here. I, I, I'm going to sneeze. I, uh, 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 uh. Bless you, Peavy. No, I didn't sneeze. I was just about to bless you. <laughs> don't bless me. I didn't sneeze. If they don't open this door, I'll bless them both. <laughs> well, at last, everybody's leaving. In a minute, I can get out of this closet. I've been standing here like a mummy in a case for two hours. All the time, Leroy seemed to be having a wonderful time. Didn't miss me at all. Well, don't hear anybody now. I'll open the door and sneak home. Hey, seems to be stuck a little. Must have locked from the outside. Well, I can't stay in here all night. Maybe I can arouse the janitor. Hey, open up! Oh, out there! Yeah, I hear footsteps. Boy, am I lucky. Here comes the janitor. Well, thank you, Mr. Whoop! <laughs> Miss Tuttle! Why, Mr. Gildersleeve, what are you doing in the closet? What am I doing? Well, I can't think of anything to say. <laughs> well, how long have you been locked in that closet? Well, I came by early this evening to see Leroy's picture, and when I started to leave, I guess I took the wrong door. I didn't see you come in the building. I came in through the window. Oh. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Oh. Go ahead and laugh. You poor man. Why didn't you let us know you were in there so you could come out and enjoy the meeting? <laughs> After our first meeting, I didn't think I'd enjoy this one. Why not? Well... When a man has made a fool of himself, he doesn't like to have it pointed out to other people. Mr. Gildersleeve, I don't even remember our first meeting. You don't? 
All I remember is a very nice man who's so interested in his little boy's schoolwork that he climbed through a window and got locked in a closet. Well, <laughs> I couldn't tell Leroy why I didn't bring him to the meeting tonight. I guess he doesn't care now if I ever see his painting. But could you point it out to me, Miss Tuttle? Of course. Miss Tuttle! Oop, Leroy's back. Better hide in the closet again. <laughs> but Mr. Gildersleeve! Miss Tuttle! Uh, yes, Leroy? Would you do me a favor? If I can... May I take my painting home? I want my uncle to see it. What a fine little boy. I'll never miss another PTA meeting as long as I... 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 Greg Gildersleeve will be with us again in just 30 seconds. The newest discovery in a table spread now comes in an ice blue package. It's Kraft's new parquet, the margarine that spreads smoothly even when ice cold. Compare new parquet with any other table spread, and you'll agree it spreads better, far better. New parquet is good eating, too, with a delightful flavor that sings of freshness. Tomorrow, look for Kraft's new parquet margarine in the blue package. It looks wonderful, it tastes wonderful, and it spreads smoothly even when ice cold. Ladies and gentlemen, this is American Education Week, and I'd like to suggest that we all visit our schools and take an active interest in them. Remember, education holds our future, and better schools build a stronger America. Of course... When you visit your school, don't lock yourself in the closet the way I did. (laughs) Hey, Unc, how'd you like my picture? Oh, great, Leroy. Splendid effort. I'm glad you brought it home to show it to me. That's okay. But, Unc, I must be hearing things. Hearing things? Yeah. When I went back to get my picture for Miss Tuttle, I thought I heard somebody sneeze. Oh? But she said I was just hearing things. (laughs) Hey, is that snow on your lapel? Snow? It looks like chalk dust. But, of course, it couldn't be. Well... Here, I'll brush it off. Leroy, don't brush it toward me. Here's it. Here's your brush. Ah! Good night, folks. The Great Gildersleeve is played by Willard Waterman. The show is written by John Elliott and Andy White and is partially transcribed. Included in the cast are Walter Tetley, Bud Steffen, Mary Lee Robb, Lillian Randolph, Mary Ship, Earl Ross, and Dick Legrand. Uh, Mr. Heaston. Yes, Commissioner? I just want the folks to know there are pictures of me and the little family in the current radio TV mirror. You might want a copy. I picked up several. <laughs> uh, musical compositions were by Jack Meekin. This is John Heaston saying goodnight for the Kraft Foods Company, makers of the famous line of Kraft quality food products. Be sure to listen in next Wednesday and every Wednesday for the further adventures of The Great Gildersleeve. Done up just right, a delicious hamburger can be truly a gourmet's delight, a big deal in eating pleasure. Of course, just about every good cook knows that a dash of craft-prepared mustard really makes a hamburger. Because when you add a little mustard, you add a lot of tang. Kraft mustard, naturally. There are two kinds of Kraft prepared mustard. Mild Kraft mustard, if you like it smooth and delicately spiced. Snappy Kraft mustard with horseradish added, if you like it zippy. Get both kinds of Kraft prepared mustard at your food store. Tonight, it's Groucho Marx and You Bet Your Life on NBC.